Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, it's wonderful to see the space filled like this. I'm Carolyn Siegfried. I'm the executive director with the Pedrosi Scholarship Foundation. And you'll hear a, a little bit more about that later. Um, and then as soon as Jennifer comes in, I'll have her I'll introduce our speakers this evening and then have Jennifer talk a little bit about you know, why we partnered with the library to do this program this evening. So you're going to hear this evening from Jill Oliveira from Las Vecinas College. I'll get off my tiny shirt. Yeah. <laughs> um, Amaril D'Souza, a Las Vecinas College student. Nidia, and I'm going to let you say your middle name if you use all it. Yes. Mares is also a Las Vecinas student and a Pedrosi Scholarship uh, recipient. Uh, Julia Dozier is with the Chabot Las Vecinas Community College District and knows everything about apprenticeship programs right here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and then Byron Benton, who is with the uh, an electrician training to, uh, apprenticeships training uh, center in San Leandro. So we're very glad to uh, see you all here, have you here, and really be able to explore options other than just uh, going directly to a four-year college directly out of high school or getting the job at McDonald's. There's a lot of other options in between and we want to just make sure we're exposing uh, students to what those are. So what I'd like to do is ask Jill, to, or ask Jennifer, yes, here, and right, Jennifer to come up. Here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, to really talk about, you know, kind of why she wanted to have this program. So Jennifer is the Teen Services Librarian for the Livermore Public Library. Hi. Thank you all for coming. This is absolutely a fantastic turnout. We are thrilled that you all came. Um, this idea was a little seed that was planted. Um, my husband and I recently had our house repiped. Um, and as I was writing that sizable check to our plumber, I thought, you know, if everybody goes to a four-year school, who's going to do this for the next owner of my home? And we really need to reach out to kids who are not sure that they want to go to a traditional four-year school and let them know that we need plumbers and welders and hairdressers. Thank you very much for my purple hair. <laughs> I mean, it, it, we need those other pieces of our society. And so we're very excited to have this <coughs> panel of speakers come and share um, information about their various programs. And Carolyn's going to moderate tonight, so just again, thank you from the library for um, coming tonight, and we're very excited to have you. Thank you. So I'm going to ask um, Jill to come up first and talk about Las Positas College programs that are available there, and programs that are available there that are really also include technical vocational training as well. So. Okay, just stack Hi, I'm Jill Oliveira. I'm a counselor at Las Positas College. I have been now for 14 years, so I've been there quite a while. Uh, tonight, um, I'm going to talk to you about Las Positas in general. I've been asked to talk about our career technical education, um, what majors and certificates we offer in that, and then also I have my own program that I'm the coordinator of that helps students be successful at college. So I want to make sure I get all that information out to you. Okay, so everyone knows what they're interested in, right? In general, you know what you like? So if you're realistic, you tend to be practical, athletic, straightforward, maybe you're mechanically inclined, um, maybe you really like nature, maybe you like to fix cars, um, maybe you're really into sports. Anybody fall into that? No? Nobody? Okay. Well, I'm going to show you the majors that tend to go with that in case you're sitting there thinking that might be you, okay? So at Las Vecinas, we have automotive <coughs> technology, we have fire service technology, horticulture, viticulture, and welding. Now, these aren't the exhaustive list, but these are some of the ones that tend to match up with people who tend to be realistically inclined, okay? That doesn't mean that's the only thing you're interested in, all right? So any of those grab somebody as interesting? All right, so investigative, scientific, analytical, observant, precise. Anyone find that they gravitate towards that? Anyone looking at maybe nursing or something like that? Okay, so these are people who might be interested in science, chemistry, biology, and engineering. Okay, a lot of these careers are what we call STEM. You may have heard of that, the science, technology, engineering, and math. Okay, those are all STEM programs. Any artists? So artistic people, if, if you gravitate toward this, you tend to be friendly, helpful, imaginative, um, innovative, and individualist. Okay. And some of our programs, we do have an emphasis in painting. 
interior design, music, photography, and theater arts. We are also getting a new art degree. I believe that is more general, not just specific to painting. So those of you who aren't into painting, but like other kinds of art, I think we'll have more. All right, who in here is social? Now, I know half of you better be raising your hands. All right, again, friendly, helpful, idealist, insightful, outgoing, and understanding. Okay, so the social people, would they be happy in a behind the desk, never talking to anyone job? Probably not, okay? Now, the nice thing about social, this is a huge category. These are some of the more obvious things that fit with it, but it's by no means exhaustive. Because if you're social, as long as you do something where you're kind of talking to people and being with people regularly, you'll probably be okay. But we do have early child development, education, psychology, and nursing. And again, not an exhaustive list. We also have a sociology degree that interests a lot of people. Anyone here into like social justice topics? Politics a little bit? All right, so how about enterprising? So these are people who are confident, assertive, sociable, persuasive, enthusiastic, and energetic. So a lot of you social people probably raise your hand again. Okay, yeah, I see nodding, okay? Because a lot of times the social kind of goes with this. These tend to be, what do you think these people usually are? Salesmen, that, yeah, definitely salespeople. They tend to be leaders because they want everybody else to do what they want to do. Okay, these are the people that want to talk you into what they're doing. They don't want to just follow you around. They're like, oh, I can say what we're doing. Okay? So if you think about your friends and the person who usually decides what everybody else does and everyone goes, oh, okay, that, that's good. That tends to be the enterprise of people. But it, how does that match with us? Um, we have business, marketing, and economics. Again, not an exhaustive list by any means, but that is kind of a key list there. Conventional. Are you organized, accurate, methodical, mathematical, conscientious, and efficient? Anyone here really good with keeping track of things and being organized and maybe like data? All right, so the conventional people, again, not an exhaustive list, but they tend to gravitate towards maybe accounting, computer science, math, and engineering. Okay, you can imagine if you're an engineer, you better be very accurate, right? Okay, so. Anyway, that is just a very quick kind of matchup between one kind of thing, which is interest with majors, all right? So by no means exhaustive. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is actually, have you guys heard about College Day that we're having at the college? On February 7th, actually, which is a Saturday, uh, we're inviting parents and prospective college freshmen out to the campus. So we will have um, information workshops. So there will actually be workshops that you can attend. And this is a great place to learn more about the majors that I just talked about. So for example, if you're interested in automotive, there will be a room that you can go to to hear more about the automotive program. Okay. Also, um, we will have information tables. So we'll all be sitting out tabling so you can walk up to us and say, hey, I want to know more about your program. Okay, so this is our opportunity to welcome you, but also to give you more information. And weather permitting, we always do college tours. So for parents, we want you to come to this. Okay, after this, sometimes we don't want the parents to come anymore. We're like, shoot, parents, go ahead. But this is one where we're really welcoming you. We want you to come learn more about the campus before you hand your kids off to us. Okay? So um, this has a long RSVP link. This is primarily so we get an idea of how many people are coming. Okay, so if you forget to RSVP and you still want to come, please come. Don't feel like if you don't let us know ahead of time, you can't come. Right? So that's happening on our campus. We have our early admission program coming. If you think you want to come to Las Positas in the fall, it is really important to do early admission. The reason is because you will get the best registration date possible. Okay, so one of the things that happens sometimes is you guys coming in, new students, you're last to register. And so you go to take your classes and they're not available. Someone else already took them. As an early admission freshman, you get to jump ahead of some of our continuing students. Okay, so we have some students that have been at the college that aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're not doing their education plans and they're not doing their assessment tests. So if you follow the steps on here, you will actually jump those lazy people and get better. So whether or not you want to come to us in the fall, this is not a commitment. This is saying I'm interested. I want to go through the steps. Um, it walks you through it on the other side. Okay, it tells you exactly what to do. So this starts February 1st. You'll ask for early admission for fall. Um, you're going to walk through these steps. So one of the first things that you're going to do is take an online orientation. So that's just a little online thing that tells you more about the college, some 
some of our policies and procedures. You're going to complete English and math assessments. Okay? And all that is is where you're going to start in English and math. Now, some of you, by the time you come to us in the fall, maybe you're not going to do English and math right away. Maybe you're going to do a certificate program that doesn't require it. Okay, we still have you take these anyway. That way, if you do want to take English and math, we'll know where to put you. Okay. Then we do group session planning. So we have about 20 students to one to two counselors who actually teach you what classes you're going to want to take that fall. So one of the questions I had um, recently was, can you take summer classes? And the answer is yes, you can. Although I would recommend talking to a counselor about that because uh, a semester at Las Vegas is 18 weeks, and summer is six weeks or eight weeks depending on the class you take. So if you can imagine compressing an 18-week class into a six or eight-week class. So I compare it to if you're a runner, the 18 is like a nice long slow jog, and the six to eight is a sprint, all-out sprint. So you got to be careful. We don't want you to start and mess it up right away. Okay. Um, anyway, so anyone who's interested, I would I would strongly urge you to apply and then that way you're in our system and you can start going through your steps and then if you are going to come you'll be already there and ready to register okay so Jill real quick yeah when you say apply that mm -hmm. might in, in, uh, imply that that has to be an acceptance good term good yes very good point so so far at LPC we have never had to limit our enrollment so in other words we've never had to turn people away who want to come to Las Vegas okay so when you apply um, you're basically asking to be in our system and to be part of our program. Okay, you're not committing, you're not, you're not going to get rejected. Um, it just takes about 24 hours to get in the system, and that, so that literally it's just to get it processed and give you a, a what we call a W number. Okay. Yes, now, yes go Does ahead. Does that apply only to Las Vegas College, or does it apply to both Las Vegas and Chimo? It actually, so you would be applying to early admission at Las Vegas if that's where you want to go. Um, but once you're in our system, you can go to both schools. Yes, and that, that's a good question. We are in the same district. Our registration system allows registration for both campuses. Okay, so the other piece I just wanted to give you um, is for people who are applying for financial aid. So I don't know if you all know, you can be doing your FAFSA right now. Um, that's the free application for federal student aid. Um, those are available. So Livermore High, February? February 7th. Seven. Okay. Seven o'clock in the theater. Spanish speaking will be in the career center. Okay. And, and that's for all the high schools in the all the high schools in the <coughs> prep school. Okay. So that is a, that is a really important night to go to if you have financial questions. So the dream map is for people that have lived here and gone to school that may not be residents yet. Really, what I'm always told when it comes to financial aid, if you're not sure, apply. There's no, it can't hurt to apply. Okay. So that's the only way to find out if you qualify for aid. If you qualify, um. A lot of our students qualify for what's called the Bob fee waiver, meaning they don't pay per unit fees. That, that, that means kind of what you said that you don't pay your fee waiver. That would be like you don't pay tuition. Right. So you would just pay for your books and club memberships. But if you qualify for a community college, uh, depend on the application level, you would not pay tuition. At right. And right now we're at $46 a unit, and most students, a full-time load would be 12 units. There's a lot of aid out there, but you can't get it unless you unless you um, file your FAFSA. So, yeah. You're encouraged to apply. Um, the deadline is March second, so you can be doing it now. If you're not, if you haven't filed taxes yet, you can actually even say you're going to file taxes and just give them an estimate. So there's no real reason really not to file now. So mm -hmm. it's happen to see their counselor yeah. at the high school about Cal Grants. Oh, for the Cal Grant GPA verification. Yes. Additional money. But some of you might have gotten a Cal Grant GPA form from your counselor, from a teacher, so make sure you do those. Okay, that's how they also help determine your aid. I also have this flyer on career technical education. Basically, at the bottom of the flyer is kind of a list of all the things that are classified as career technical education. These tend to be majors that you can get a two-year degree or even a certificate in and move straight into work. Okay. So people pursuing these degrees, it doesn't mean they won't transfer or they won't continue their education at some point, but they are uh, majors that tend to lead towards careers not having to transfer to university. Okay, so um, this is where you're going to find our welding. Um, we kind of go from accounting tech to welding, A to, A to W. Okay? And, and my hope is as funding gets better for our campus that we'll be adding to this list um, because I think these are really important. 
lot of people really want to come and get something that they can go to work. There's an exciting new program starting up. We didn't on here yet, but we haven't started yet. But it's an engineering engineering tech program. So most of the time, people want to be engineers. Of course, have to go to a four year. But the engineering tech program will be for people interested in engineering but want to go just to get their two year degree and then go into work. Um, because again, there's a need. I mean, this is what we're hearing from the community when we meet as a as a group. This is what all the counselors are saying, we need more career technical fields. We have a lot of people that don't want to go straight to university, and they maybe don't ever want to go to university. So they need to have a viable career option. <coughs> now, if you go on our website, you can actually read more about these. Um, we also have our catalog on our website. So our 2014-16 catalog is there right now. And each, each of these will have its own page to give you more information, to tell you the kinds of classes you might be taking. Um, and then tell you if they, there's just a certificate or if there's a degree that goes with it. Okay, so that would be where you can get more information. Or for sure come to our, um, our college day because, again, there will be presenters about the different programs on that day. Okay. So the other thing I did want to briefly talk about um, is my program, which is called Extended Opportunity Programs and Services. My program is a program that serves um, educationally and economically disadvantaged students. So one of the first things that we require is that students file a FAFSA, and if they qualify for the fee waiver, what we were just talking about, meaning they don't pay the $46 a unit, then they would potentially qualify for my program. And then the next thing is they would have to qualify somehow educationally, <coughs> which for a lot of people, they're not ready to take college level English or math. Um, might be the first person in your family to go to college. I know I was one of those, and I would have appreciated a program like mine to kind of help navigate it. Um, so lots of different educational disadvantages that we can find. So our program does serve full-time students. Okay, so you have to be taking at least 12 units. Um, and then we just basically help you go to college in the simplest of terms. Okay, we offer a book service. We offer counseling services. So. Our students don't have to go to general counseling, they just come straight to me. Um, my students get priority registration, so they actually get the best date of all the students on campus. So that's a real, that's a real big perk. Um, what else? Uh, give supplies, oh, supplies. We get bus tickets. Um, okay, so some of you, I, I am amazed at the turnout. Um, some of you have a flyer with my card on it, some don't, but either way, if your student contacts my program, we will get back to you. Okay, so one of the things that I've been trying to do is reach out to potential EOPS students. So um, I will be at some of the program planning sessions that are coming up this spring as kind of an extra counselor to give some more one-on-one -on -one attention. Um, so if you see me there, make sure you give me a shout out. And if you are confused in the process somewhere. So even if you think, you know what, I'm probably not going to qualify for the OPS, but somewhere in those six, I would have made it six steps, six steps um, to success, to early admission. If somewhere in this process you start to feel like, wait, I'm confused. I, I might have done something wrong, or I don't know what my next step is, feel free to email me. And I would be more than happy to, to make sure that you're back on the path and that I can answer any questions for you. Okay, so. Our EOPS email's on there, and then some of you have my card. I do have more cards, too, if someone wants one. Um, I can hand more out of it. Okay, so mostly, my biggest goal is for people who think they might want to come to apply, because that way we can get you in the process. Um, now, sometimes we get students the week before classes start. It always happens. And usually we can find you something. It won't maybe be the best of some things, but we'll find it. But really, it's better to, to be a little more out in front of things. What I'm here to talk about today is apprenticeship, and I can only tell you from my perspective. I want to tell you a little bit about my history. So in high school, I was one of those social people, and I wanted to be a high school history teacher. I thought that was the perfect dream job. I'd have my summers off, and I'd travel, and I'd you know, have fun at work, and that was my goal. In my junior year at Cal State Hayward at the time, they said there were no uh, jobs for those with a degree in history. I got really discouraged. I did not have support at home. I didn't have anybody telling me to keep going anyway, no matter what. So as a junior back, you know, fresh out of high school, as a junior in college, I dropped out. 
and I started searching. I was working in retail, I took classes at San Jose City College. Next thing you know, for me, I was stuck in a job at a grocery store. Now I'm married, three little girls, I have three daughters, and that is not how I wanted to raise them, where I worked every weekend, worked holidays, things like that. So at the age of 28, I found out about apprenticeship. Is anybody in this room familiar with apprenticeship? The reality is most of us are not, very few of us are, but it's huge in Europe. In Europe, they'll take, like in Germany, at the age of 14 or 15 or 16, they'll know which career path someone's going to go on. If they're going to go into college, if they're going into a trade, uh, they'll determine that at an early age. I can only speak for myself that at the age of 28, when I had a young man come up to me and say, have you ever thought of being an electrician? My answer was no. I never thought about it. But, you know, I might. And here's why I said I might. My dad was a carpenter. I had taken two years of wood shop, and I really liked learning and doing things on paper. So, you know, I just might. So I applied for the electrical apprenticeship program. Back then, our local education agency, our apprenticeship students, our college students, they get college credit through Chabot. We work under Julia's guidance for the educational aspect of our program. But when I applied, over 2,000 people applied to get into the school apprenticeship program. They only took applications once every two years. I got accepted two years later. So at the age of 31, I began this new pathway in my life towards a career. Now I can say you make a lot more money as an electrician than you do as a, as a teacher. Though I would have preferred to be a teacher, I never thought I would make the money that I ended up making as a union electrician. And the reason why I'm asking Jennifer to bring up this website is again, apprenticeship. Back to this word, apprenticeship. One of the terms is you, you learn while you earn. So you work during the day, but you go to school at night, for the most part. California has more apprentices <coughs> and apprenticeable occupations than any state in the country. So we're going to go to a site called calapprenticeship.org. And I would just encourage all of you to learn more about different options and opportunities in apprenticeship that are out there. But let me tell you a little about our program for electricians. <coughs> now we're a like I said, union electrician with the IBEW, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. And we're in conjunction with the contractors, NECA National Electrical Contractors Association. So here's how it works. Over the course of our five-year apprenticeship program, our students go to school for over a thousand hours of related classroom instruction. In addition to that, they work a minimum of 8,000 hours of paid employment. They start at over $18 an hour, and at the end of the five years, they're making $47 an hour as a union electrician with benefits, health and welfare, pension, etc. But there's many trades out there, depending on what you're interested in. <coughs> One of the students here earlier talked about construction, you know, carpentry, etc. Um, there's so much out there. But here's the process for those of you who are interested. Number one, to apply to our particular apprenticeship program, you need to be 18 years of age. You need to be a high school graduate, and you need to have at least a C or better in high school algebra. Now, I've done many career events like this over the years. And I hope if you take anything away from what I say here tonight, and that's the students and the parents who are concerned about their students. Everyone needs good math skills, whether you're an electrician or not. We solve problems on paper, and that's what good math skills allow us to do. Everyone needs good reading skills, where you can comprehend what you read. Well, guess what? The first stage in applying for our apprenticeship program is to sit for an aptitude test based on math and reading comprehension. So step one is you apply in person. We just took applications January 17th. We had over 400 people apply in that one seven hour window in one day. Those who meet the qualifications, 18 years of age, high school graduate, the math requirement, 
will be scheduled for an aptitude test, math and reading comprehension. Those who get a qualifying score on that will finally go to an oral interview where both the contractors and the union officials will ask everyone the same questions and at that point determine who is the bet best fit for this five-year program. I'll tell you a little bit also I think that you might be interested in. Everybody talks now about the green economy. You hear President Obama. Governor Brown came to the grand opening of our new training center. One of the areas that people believe may be the next economy in this country is renovating existing commercial buildings to be more energy efficient and then adding to that renewable energy so we can get off of our dependence on foreign oil. Our training center just so happens to be a zero net energy buildings. We produce clean renewable energy, solar and wind, more than we take off the electrical grid at the end of the year. We over generated by 75,000 kilowatt hours. That's why we had NASA at our building yesterday. Last week, we've got like five different groups that were here in the last week. We had uh, an advisor from President Obama's staff come to the building. We had the Sierra Club come. Because we all know about climate control or issues with the climate. We all know about our dependency on foreign oil. And how we're going to get off of that is making our buildings more efficient. So that's what we train on. Yes, we do traditional work <coughs> in electrical construction, but we're really focused on the future and energy efficiency. So with that said, um, I don't know, I'm just going to throw it out to any quick questions if you had any. Otherwise, I'm going to leave. You did? Go ahead. Kind of like Apprenticeship is where you actually work during the day and get paid. Oh, so you get paid. You get paid. Our apprentices started over $18 an hour. The only thing they pay for over the course of those five years are their books, which is about $500 a year, and about $500 worth of starting hand tools. Other than that, everything is supplied. Then every six months at the completion of a semester of school and 800 hours of work, they get a raise of approximately two dollars and thirty-five cents an hour. Anybody else? I do want to say there's a misnomer about apprenticeship, <coughs> and I saw this about those not wanting to go to college. Here's our new reality in this country. We're all going to have to continue to upgrade our skills and knowledge as long as we're out there working in, in this society. It's the reality that it is. So that's why our students are getting Associate of Science degrees through Chabot, while they're also getting a five-year apprenticeship uh, certification from the state of California and the Department of Labor. Um, we do have to you know, have our students go for an additional four or five classes at one of the Chabot campuses to get that AS degree. But then many go on to bachelors. And it happens the other way for us as well. Those who have bachelor degrees actually decide, you know what, I think I'd like to go into the electrical field and then come into our apprenticeship. And then there's others that college isn't for them, and they just they do just fine as well. So there's all of these different options, but in the end, uh, we know that we have to continue to upgrade our knowledge and skills. Fair enough? Yeah. So you're working 40 hours a week, yeah. and then you go to classes every night? So here's how our program works out specifically. The first year, the apprentices go to school at eight for 38 hour days. So for 30 weeks out of the year, one day they don't go to, go to work, they come to school for eight hours. They work the remaining uh, 32 hours that week. But years two through five, they work Monday through Friday, the typical shift is seven to 3.30, and then they go to school at night, just the, identical to the Chabot calendar, and the same nights, the same start and stop dates for the semester, and they'll go, say, Monday and Wednesdays from 5 to 8, or Tuesday, Thursday from 5 to 8, in conjunction with the college. So, Byron, how would they, if they want to look into contact? What I was hoping we could do, because I am not going to be able to stick around and answer questions later. I have a 10-year-old grandson that needs me to pick him up. <laughs> but uh, I would like to leave my email address and give folks information that way. And if you do think about it later, just shoot me an email. Um, for those of you who would like to come down and see the building, we're located in San Leandro. We're actually getting honored on Thursday for um, the green business of the city for 2014 for San Leandro. But uh, we're in San Leandro, the geographic center of the San Francisco Bay Area. And that's what we love. We love our location. We're literally the geographic center of San Francisco Bay Area. 
And I'm going to end it with this. Of the students here, they did a study of the top corporations in this country. And they asked them, what are you looking for? What's the number one thing you're looking for when you're going to hire someone? The number one is your ability to communicate, both in writing and in speaking. Because in the end, you're going to be in front of a group of people and you have to sell yourself. Anyway, with that said, I hope all of you will continue with your studies no matter what you do. And I'd like to say I thought I knew what I was going to do when I was 18. It didn't happen. But because I kept going to school, I kept trying to improve myself, I kept trying to expand my knowledge and understanding, eventually the right opportunity presented itself just as it will for you. Okay? Okay, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Byron. Okay. Apprenticeship programs are one of the best kept secrets out there. And it's, um, it's one of those situations where I wish everybody knew about it. In California, there are 55,000 apprentices. Apprentices are people who go, as you heard from Byron, you go to work um, and you get paid to be on the job, and then you also go um, to classes. It's not easy. It's not easy, as, as you can imagine. So uh, there are over 500 programs in California, uh, apprenticeship programs, and that means that there's everything from you know about welders, you know about carpenters, you know about electricians. Um, there are glaziers who put up glass. Um, with my, under my jurisdiction, I have fire sprinkler alarm um, installers. I have roofers. I have um, paint and decorating, drywall, um, fire life safety, the people that install low voltage electricity so that when you push the button when you're in the hospital, the nurse hears it. Very important. Um, and so there are, and then there are things like um, psychiatric technicians in um, psychiatric hospitals. That's an, electric, uh, that's an apprenticeship program as well. There are barbers and cosmetologists. Um, probably anyone that cuts your hair went through an apprenticeship program at some time or for a, a program like so this is a, um, a program about called, um, I built it, and it is um, uh, California apprentices talking about their program and how they are now working in the field. Six story hospital. Oil refinery. And I built it. I built this bridge. I built it. I built it. I built it with my two hands. With these hands. Five, ten fingers here. <laughs> and I'm proud of it. What, the way that we fit in is every apprenticeship program has to have a local educational agency, which means a, some kind of an educational agency that decides that the program, uh, the quality of the classroom is, um, the classroom work is um, high enough to, to warrant a certificate, that the classroom environment is um, quality for your student learning, and so my job at the community college district is to make sure that the programs that we work with um, all qualify and also to help the students who are in those programs apply for, um, they get college credit. So if you are in an apprenticeship program that happens to be affiliated with a college program, um, then you get college credit for your classroom hours. So in addition to becoming an electrician, went up to Byron's um, program, you would also get about 30 hours of college credit that you could then, if you like, um, decide to add some general ed classes and you would end up with a degree. Okay? If not, that's fine too. Um, and so apprenticeship programs are really a situation where, especially for those of us who don't want to work at a desk and um, don't really know what you're doing, um, and what you want to be, what I would encourage you to do is go on to the California Department of Apprenticeship Standards, or you can even go to ibuilt.org. Um, DAS is Department of Apprenticeship Standards. They are in charge of all apprenticeship programs in the state. Um, and so if you go there, if there are tests that you can take that will say, I mean, assessments 
that say, are you, what are you interested in? Do you like doing this? If so, you might want to be a painter. Um, if not, you might want to be a um, floor layer or whatever. Um, as you heard from Byron, there is good money in the trades. There is good money in the trades. Did you hear that? There is good <laughs> money in the trades. And yes, it is for women as well as men. As a matter of fact, many programs are desperate to have women in their programs. So if you are a woman or you have no one um, who is looking for a career, uh, apprenticeship programs are an incredible opportunity for them. Something was missing after I left the Marines and I wasn't finding it working in the retail business. I decided to be an operating engineer about I guess two years ago. You know, my buddy Ted showed me pictures of the stuff he built and I was like, man, I want to be involved in that. I remember seeing these pieces of equipment thinking, oh my gosh, that tire is five times as tall as I am. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't think I could do it when I was a waitress just going to work every day and I finally needed a career and I just said, I'm going to do it. Uh, I got into apprenticeship. I had a good friend who told me how to get in. And I looked into it. Um, their benefits were excellent. Um, the pay started out great for being out of high school. I filled out an application and they called me back. I started the program and it's been the most rewarding career. I wish I would have started when I was younger. You can be an apprentice at any age. It is for everyone. Your normal four-year college is not for everybody. You learn while you earn. They really do a lot of good training. But when I first got on equipment for real, it's a, I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit scary. They're going to show you the proper way to do it, and they have. And now I'm a certified welder. After that, it's cake, and it's fun. Yeah, when you journey out, you make really good money. It's a career. The pay is wonderful. It's not just a J-O-B. The roadways always have to be built. The bridges are always going to be built. And uh, there's always going to have to be somebody to do it. Depending on the program um, is how the, the length of time that you go is anywhere from two years to five years. Um, the the uh, classroom training piece of it is, it, it really depends on the program. Byron's program, you go for the first year, you go once a week for all day. Um, other programs, you go for a two-week block of school, and then the rest of, the, of four months you go um, to go to work. And again, this is the work that you're doing is going to be on site, um, putting to practice the things that you're learning in the classroom. So, if you are, for instance, in Byron's program, then you will be working alongside of a journeyman um, electrician. Journeyman is the person who reached certification level. Um, and uh, you'll be working alongside of them. They will help you learn the pieces. And as you grow, you get more and more responsibility. Um, you also get a bump in pay every six months. Um, and uh, did, I, did I mention that there's really good money in the trades? <laughs> I, I tell you, it, there is really good money in the trades. And the thing is that um, I know that I don't look really old, but I really am. And, um, and I, along with most of my generation, are all going to be retiring at some point, not too long from now. And so there is a huge um, population that is currently working in the trades that is going to be retiring. And so there's going to be a huge need for people who can work at the trades and make a lot of money. Um, I know it's not about that. I understand that life is not about making money, but there's a lot of money. <laughs> um, and so I would really encourage you to go to Department of Apprenticeship Standards, look at it, um, just, just peruse through the various programs and see what might interest you. And um, just push it around and, and, and say, if you have, you know, this might do it, or I, I might try this, or I might try that. Um, there's a lot of things out there. There's 500 programs in the state of California. So surely something can grab your attention. Um, things like uh, surveyors. You know who's the surveyors, the guys that have those tripods out in the middle of the street? They, uh, that's an apprenticeable program as well. So you can learn to be a surveyor. Um, and it's just astounding, the, the number of programs that are out there. And again, if your parents are hassling you because they want you to go to college, 
and you're hassling them because you don't. Um, join an apprenticeship program that has, <coughs> gives you college credit, and then everyone will be happy. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Any? I have a question. Yes. So these apprenticeships often it takes a year or two, right, to actually get into them, or are there some that a student can get in, like right after high school, they've got to see in math and that kind of thing. And if it's taking some time, what would you suggest for that student to do as they're waiting to get into the program? Okay. Um, whether you get directly into the program or not depends on how impacted it is. Um, it just depends on when they're taking applications and what they need and all those kinds of things. Um, I would suggest that if you are waiting, um, that you go and talk to the training program coordinator and ask them, is there somebody who's out there that I could just watch and do some of this work? Um, I would encourage you to work alongside of somebody or just watch somebody do um, the trade for a little while to make sure that that looks like something you really want to do. Um, it, yes, it's, it's great that there's a lot of money in the trades, but also um, you, this is your life, and so you actually are going to be doing it. So um, see if it looks interesting to you. Um, hang around the, the people that are doing it and talk to them. It is amazing how different people are that um, get into apprenticeship programs and into the trades. Um, there are people who have um, families who've always been carpenters, and you know their daddy and their uncle and their grandpa and all those people were carpenters, and so they're going to be a carpenter too. Um, <clears throat> those people happen to be the ones that know about apprenticeship programs. Um, it, it's their secret and they don't tell anybody about it. Um, I'm here to tell you. Uh, there are also people who have gone and had jobs like on Wall Street, literally, and decided that they wanted to get a real job and actually do something that they did with their hands and they could see what was accomplished and um, go and work on the bridge or do pile drivers or do underwater welding like deep underwater welding with those, you know, those, those roundy things that look like Captain Nemo? Yeah, it's technical. I'm really smart. I know all these things. Um, and, um, and that that's astounding I mean, to me. And, but if, if those are the people that are building our bridges, we want them to know what they're doing. So um, they go through this process, they work with people, they go to training, and, they, um, and then they also go um, and go to school. Not everybody needs to know math for all programs. In spite of what Byron said, um, if you can't do algebra, um, my heart is with you. And uh, uh, so not all programs need math. You do have to be able to read. Um, but it just depends on, on the program as to what's required. So what you'll, what you'll do is you'll, you're going to go into, um, onto the website and then pull down things that will tell you what to do. And they will tell you, uh, you, can, you know, there's links to everything, and they will tell you what the requirements are in order to qualify. Okay? Are you all going to be underwater welders? <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Now we have an opportunity for you to hear from students. And so we're going to have you hear, um, hear from two Las Vegas college students. And these are both, I know, uh, Lydia graduated from Livermore High School and Emerald High School. I graduated from Dublin High School. From Dublin High School. So, and kind of their experience, um, they're a little bit different, and, but they're both at Las Positas with plans to transfer to a four-year school. So first I'd like to invite Emerald to just come and, and talk a little bit. Hi, everyone. My name's Amber D'Souza. Um, let's see, I graduated from high, um, Dublin High about four years ago, and I've been uh, ever since then in uh, Las Casillas. Um, I'm currently working as a counselor assistant under Jill uh, for the EOPS program over there. Uh, I've been a student assistant for EOPS uh, for about two years now. Um, uh, my major is electrical engineering. Um, I know people who don't like math at all. Um, it's actually my favorite subject. Uh, I've taken math and physics and chemistry uh, for practically almost every semester. Um, what I like about community college is um, just the experience of smaller classes. Um, I'm 
I'm actually very afraid to talk public speaking and stuff. So um, for me, smaller class, more tension um, works best. I need that, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, communication with an, an instructor. Uh, them knowing my name makes me feel very comfortable. Uh, my older sister went to UC Davis. Their uh, classroom size was about 300 to 500 students. The instructor did not care whether you know you were present or not. Um, my younger sister goes to San Jose State, and same thing over there. Um, you know they have about 100, 200 students in a classroom. Uh, that environment probably eventually I'll probably you know uh, get used to it. But as of right now, as you know beginning trying to find the basis in any classroom. Um, I needed that one-on-one -on -one interaction, and that's why I liked going to Los Angeles. Um, the other thing is, uh, both my sisters, uh, my older sister actually got her bachelor's in healthcare administration, and um, she's actually in loan, like she's in debt already. Uh, she has uh, tons of loans uh, that she has to pay, um, you know, and it's she's been graduated for over a year now. Um, but she's still paying them and she expects to be paying them for the next five years probably. Um, for me, I've been in Los Pacitas for four years and as of right now, I have never taken a loan in those four years. Um, thanks to EOPS, I, got el I was eligible for that. They helped me financially uh, for books, support, uh, supplies, uh, the small things that sometimes we don't realize as students um, because you pay for your own books. You have to figure out your own classes when you go to, you know, in high school it's all easy. Books are, you know, free, textbooks are given to you. Uh, counselors are there, they, you know, you tell them, you know, you probably have a checklist kind of thing. I want this, but they figure out a schedule for you and say, hey, here you go. Um, when you go to college, you choose your own schedule. To, you know, if you plan on working on top of that, you have to make sure it fits within your schedule. Um, so all that thing uh, for me, Los Pacitas became really lucky because I got to um, join classes that I really wanted. Um, and the very first semester, I joined EOPS. So second semester onwards, I got priority reg. That means I got the very first date that we usually have, um, which is very good because usually our classes are small size and it gets filled up usually. Uh, really quickly, especially lower level math, science, uh, English classes, speech classes. Um, so it was really fun for me. Um, I haven't really, you know, been ever more appreciative of this program than right now. Um, I'm actually, I just applied for nine colleges this past November. And uh, if, and EOPS helped me pay for eight of them. And I got a fee waiver for the ninth one. But EOPS does do that. It, it helps you pay, you know, things that you would not really think of. They pay for um, four UCs and CSU, up to four UCs and CSU applications. Um, I believe UC applications are 75 bucks each. And then uh, CSUs, I believe, is like 55 each. But, you know, that's easily about 400-ish. Well, actually, it's 490 now. Yeah, about 490 for eight colleges, about. about. So if you are just planning to go to those uh, right out of high school, you still have to pay, you know, application fees, which is expensive. Uh, my parents are, have never been to college. I was the first generation. My older sister went to college, but... Um, you know, it's it's different for us as you know being a first generation college. What to expect? Um, parents not having that background to help you in classes. Um, I figured my way through. Uh, I loved math. I I, was, I had great uh, GPA even back in high school. But and so I tried tutoring a little bit. Um, I became more involved in EOPS. Uh, you know, and then I got hired. So it was awesome. Uh, I've been, you know, I've been playing around uh, in the sense, um, not with school. My school is, you know, I try to take 12 units or more every semester. I'm very particular about the classes I want to take. 
Um, by the end of this semester, I'm actually being, uh, I'll be getting an associate's degree in mathematics, associate's degree in physics, um, and <laughs> associate's degree in liberal arts and science, emphasis in math and science, and finally two certificates, which is the IGETC and GEVET, which covers CSUs and UC general ed. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, all of this was evil and I was, it was a possibility for me just because of everything I was told and I was shown. You know, EOPS, um, Jill has been there all my four years telling me, hey, this is the path, you know, you need to take these classes, you need to take these. Uh, you know, there's a lot of support there if you're looking for it. So just, be, and I know, you know, I'm not to put UCs or CSUs down, but bigger campuses, the more, you know, per, um, you know, there's so many students per, for one instructor that they don't have that one-on-one -on -one communication. You, if you are the shy person, I, I, I used to be shy, not anymore, <laughs> but um, it's pretty much, it's very hard to go to an instructor and say, hey, you know, I need help. And sometimes they don't even, they'll be like, come to your office, come to my officer. And if your officer doesn't work with your schedule, you're like, oh shoot, so I'm, you know, I'm stuck, I don't know anything. Um, for me, um, being an elect a electrical engineering major, uh, one of the downsides for me was um, all my classes, majority of my engineering classes were all filled with males. I was the only girl. I, I had, we had, um, I've, there's only six engineering classes in um, Los Casitas, out of which three of them, I was the only girl in my class. Um, which was kind of intimidating because, um, you know, the guys, they, they come and they're like, huh, how come you're here? And I'm like, um, my very first semester I took this class and I actually went to the instructor, you know, I'm like 18 years old, going to the instructor and being like, is this supposed to be an all males class? Because what we allowed to place here? And he's like, no, this is for everyone. And in a classroom of 30, I was one girl. Um, and eventually it got easier, you know, seeing, okay, I'm the only girl. But even till day, like if I take a class, a physics class or whatever, there's very few girls. And so if you are interested in math and science, just because someone tells you you cannot do it or you feel left out, don't give up your hobby. And that's all I gotta say. Wow. Thank you very much.
don't worry about it. I was exactly like that. I didn't know what I wanted to do when I first enrolled to law school students. It wasn't until I took a um, emergency medical service class when I realized that I wanted to go into the health field. So um, that's when I actually realized that I wanted to be a surgical nurse. <laughs> so that's what uh, my field that I went to major on. And the next thing that I want to share um, is that uh, for those who don't know what you want to do, you can join a club. They're going to help you out. They, I can tell you right now that there's probably like a club for anything, a lot of students college. Mm -hmm. And it's probably not a lot of students, maybe every single college has a club for every single thing that I can imagine. And also a really good thing about a club is that they offer um, their own scholarships. So every year, Las Positas has uh, offers a really large uh, variety of scholarships for students. But the great thing about joining a club is that you get to have like extra scholarships that you can actually apply for. But you have to be a member of a club to actually apply for them. Um, so yeah, scholarship is pretty much free money for you guys. It's really crazy. I was uh, so yesterday I found out that I was the recipient for the, one of the recipients for the. American uh, scholarship. Mm -hmm. So um, it was so crazy when they, I was shocked when they told me that I was the first student from Las Positas after 10 years to actually apply for that scholarship. Mm -hmm. So people don't really apply for them. When I actually was submitting my application that day, I um, I thought maybe, I was like, maybe I don't really have like much chance to actually get it. There's still like maybe at least 10 more students that are, are actually going to submit it, not just me. So I was actually wrong. I was the only one <laughs> after 10 years. So um, the next thing that I want to share with you guys is that teachers are going to be there to help you. Professors are there to help you. Just don't be afraid to come up to them and ask them. If you don't get the subject, just go there and uh, they'll try their best to help you out. Whatever you need. Trust me, they'll do the best. But of course, you have to take the initiative to go up to them and ask them about your grade. They're not going to go up to you and be like, oh, you're actually doing bad in the class. Let's do this. No, you have to go up to them and talk to them. Uh, or if you need some extra help, you can get a tutor, or you can even become one if uh, you're really good in the subject. So uh, I was actually taking chemistry class, and it was the first time, my first time taking chemistry. I did not know anything about the subject. And uh, I actually signed up for a tutor. They're free for you. You can meet them, I think, once or twice a week. And I, I really helped them for my tutor because I actually got an A on my chemistry class thanks to wow. my tutor. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And the next thing that I want to share with you guys is books. So, many times the teachers are going to tell you that you need a certain book, but you might not. So, and I'm going to talk about little. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, but uh, you can always buy books online. They're going to be cheaper. I remember my professor, uh, like, just for like a year, I actually bought books from the bookstore. They're way more expensive than online. So you can just, you just have to uh, look up for some books and it might be used or anything, but they're going to be cheaper and you're actually saving some money. And the, I think the last thing that I want to share with you guys is a website called www.professors.com. I don't know if uh, you guys as seniors use this in high school. You guys don't. So it's not like a college thing, I, I guess. <laughs> so this website has been really helpful for me. This website is like a gel kind of thing, but it's instead of um, uh, writing like places or restaurants or anything, it's much for professors. You go there and you read uh, reviews from students who have actually taken that class before. And they, um, I mean, to me, has been really helpful because sometimes they tell you, don't buy the book, you guys are not going to need it at all. So for me, uh, it's been really helpful because I don't have to spend that extra money that sometimes I don't really have in a book that we, we're not going to need at all. You also get to hear like experiences about uh, how the teacher, like how the dynamics are in the classroom, so you actually have like an overview of the professor. And I just want to wish you guys the best. <laughs> and I want to say this quote that I like. So it says, "If you're always uh, racing to the next moment, what happens? What happens to the?"
the one you're in. So I just want to tell you guys to enjoy college. It's a really great experience. Thank you. different options. There's a lot of different options to explore for life after high school. And as I mentioned before, I'm with the Pedrozzi Scholarship Foundation, and we award scholarships. We just said that that free money, and we award scholarships only to graduates from the Livermore High Schools. So from Livermore High School, Bernada, Del Val, and Vineyard, and we award scholarships for technical vocational schools. So uh, if there's other, op that's another option for uh, preparing for careers. We community college, undergraduate, and graduate school. But I really want to tell you, for community college last year, we sent to Las Positas College $45,500. So that was for 46 students at Las Positas. So, but you have to apply. You have to apply for the scholarships. So our scholarship applications You'll see outside that there's um, flyers for those out here. It's on our website, pedrosifoundation.org. The applications are due March 2nd. We also have a category for an opportunity scholarship. So within, if you're applying for a community college scholarship or for a technical vocational scholarship and you're an opportunity scholar, which we define as somebody who will be the first in your family to attend college, and you have a demonstrated financial need, you can just answer just a couple more questions and then you're eligible for that category of scholarship as well. <coughs> However, to what, how you prove your demonstrated financial need is you go back to, you have to submit your student aid report from your financial aid application, which both Jill talked about and Emerald talked about and Lydia talked about, so that's completing the FAFSA or the California Dream Act. So I encourage all of you, so this is not a national scholarship, this is only for graduates of the high schools in Livermore. So I definitely encourage you um, to apply.